right. Hey there, students. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about stockholders equity. So we're going to go through here and talk about what stockholders equity is. We're going to learn how to calculate it, and then we're going to practice a problem. So just to jump right in here, stockholders equity, basically, if you know the accounting equation, right, assets minus liabilities equals equity. So that's just another way to say it. Equity is basically the claim against assets. So big companies, or really any company, they want equity in their company. Usually with corporations, they sell shares of stock or shares of ownership to the public. The public gets to own a little piece of that company. And in return, the company gets cash from the from the public. So it's nice. So now that the, the public actually has kind of some ownership in that company and an investment, and that's good for the corporation, right? They they get more people investing into their company. That's a positive thing for the market. So that's the general um, definition, really, of stockholders' equity. And I calculated their assets minus liabilities equals equity. So like I was saying, you can sell shares of stock to the public. And think about a share of stock as a piece of ownership. That's what it is. People get to own a little piece of that company. There's a lot of stuff involved with equity, and this is usually the most confusing topic to a lot of my students. Equity is, it just seems to be an enigma to a lot of students, and hopefully in this video I can kind of clear that up on what it is, and we can talk about how we calculate it, which will further enforce that concept, and then we can do a practice problem. So lastly here, um, knowing about equity, sometimes they call it net assets, because it's what's left over after you subtract all the liabilities, right? Liabilities, like I said, is claims against your assets. So after you subtract out liabilities, it equals something called net assets. And they usually call that more in governmental accounting. That's another name for it. There's a lot of stuff involved with equity. So like, I'll just give you some examples. You got stock, you got retained earnings, you have dividends, uh, something called APIC, which means additional paid in capital. And just a brief definition of that basically is when you sell shares of stock to, um, to really anyone in the public, they give you cash, but there's something called a stated rate or a we can just keep it at stated rate of what the stock is worth when you first founded the company. And then there's a market value of that stock. And that's a little bit different. But we're not going to get too far into like how to calculate based on that. We just want to go over a general definition of equity and go through how to calculate it here. So I'm going to move down. How do you calculate it? Well, you're going to have a lot of different stuff here. So you're going to start with your stock. So we'll start with common stock, which is the most common form of stock. And that's going to have an inherent value to it. So think about, let's just say when you founded the company, it was valued at a dollar per share. But that's going to, that, that actually does stay the, um, stay the same here. But um, you're also going to have a market value. The market value of the stock will fluctuate based on the market but it always has an inherent value to it. Same with preferred stock. So preferred stock is just, think about it like VIP stock. That's what I like to call it, where only certain people can own those shares. They get more favor with the company. They can, they can have more voting rights. Usually the stock is worth more. Um, they get claims um, to dividends first as well. So preferred shareholders are like VIP shareholders. They're important. Common 
usually comes last and it's a lot cheaper usually and preferred stock is more expensive to buy. So you have common stock, preferred stock. Uh, you're going to have something called um, APIC, which you also add in. So again, these are all additions to your equity. APIC is a good way to just to say that is it's the excess. So the amount that's over of market over the stated amount. So like I said up here, like this is your stated rate, just an example. But sometimes the market rate might be more, right? Maybe it's $5 per share, maybe it's $10. And so APIC or what we call additional paid in capital is the excess amount over stated. It's the difference, but you have to add that in. Then you're gonna have something called retained earnings. So hopefully you all know what retained earnings is by now, but it's just basically, I like to think of it like a savings account for companies. They just, it's the amount of money they hold from year to year. They make money every year and they just put this in their little savings account and it carries forward from year to year. And that's part of your equity. Now within retained earnings, you're going to have something called dividends. And that's what you give out to the public. It's kind of like a reward. You say, thanks. Thank you for investing in my company. I'm going to give you a dividend. So I consider it kind of like a reward. And you actually deduct that. It's deducted from retained earnings. And then lastly here, you have something called treasury stock, which this is just basically when uh, you buy back your own stock. So you remember you gave stock out to the public and then now for certain reasons you buy it back. And I'll move down so you, everyone can see this here. And that's basically what that means. So these are basic definitions. And like I said, common stock is added, preferred stock is added, APIC is added, retained earnings is added, dividends are subtracted and treasury stock is subtracted from equity. So that's the basic calculation of it. Let's move into a problem. So will make everything more clear. So Sydney Corp has $2,000 in common stock, $3,400 preferred stock. I like to circle the numbers and underline the accounts because it keeps everything in line. $5,600 in APIC. Then they have $2,200 in Treasury, $4,700 in retained earnings. What do you report for equity? Well, we just follow the formula here. So we know that common stock was equal to 2000. So we'll add that. Preferred stock was equal to 5600. Oh, sorry, no, 3400. APIC equaled 5600. Retained earnings was equal to 4,700. And then lastly, treasury stock was equal to 2,200. Now all of them are added, except for treasury stock, you always deduct that. So I'll underline this and I'll move this up. And let's just go ahead and calculate it. So get out your calculators, 2,000 plus 3,400 plus 5,600, plus 4,700, minus 2,200. And there we go. Stockholders equity, you would report for 13,500. So that's about it here. Uh, we went through what stockholders equity is, uh, how you calculate it, what's involved, different definitions of the accounts, and then finally went through a practice problem where we tied it all together. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to comment and like. It really helps. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. It always helps for the channel. As I go ahead and release more videos, I'm going to start doing it a lot more often weekly. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.